it's a pleasure to be here and to wish happy birthday to Toma. Uh, in contrast with some other speakers, I'm not a student or a direct collaborator of Toma, but um, I just wanted to mention about 20 years ago when I came to France, uh, it was very influential for me to even to have some short discussion uh, with Toma in Strasbourg or, or in Paris. Uh, I will speak indeed about Poisson boundaries. There are several ways to define the boundary. Um, we can consider a group and a random walk on a group, given a probability measure mu. Yes, I forgot to mention, don't hesitate uh, to ask uh, if you have any questions. Uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me at any moment uh, if something is not clear. Um, uh, and we consider random walk. So at time n, uh, we, go, we, we stay at position xn in our group, and we go to xn times something, small g. And uh, small g is uh, chosen with probability mu of g. And um, um, we define the boundary, for example, in the following way. Uh, when we have two trajectories, x, y, and y, i, we say that they are equivalent if x, y is equal to y, i plus k, uh, let's say for any i greater than some constant n. So that is. Uh, the, uh, uh, we say trajectories are equivalent if up to a f a time shift they really coincide after some time instant. There are many other equivalent definitions. For example, this is called exit boundary. And this is one of equivalent definition of Poisson boundary. Uh, one can uh, speak about uh, tail boundary, uh, not allowing time shift. Uh, just say really equal uh, from some t the time instant. Uh, for, for general Markov chains, uh, these definitions are a bit di different, but for random walks on groups, this gives uh, the same object. And there is uh, also a way to define Poisson boundary in terms of mu harmonic functions. Uh, maybe I mention it a little bit later. So, and our goal to understand what is the boundary of the group. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so, something that may be uh, more well known for this audience here. Uh, as you all know, right, if the group is hyperbolic, or at least if it has some hyperbolic feature, I don't say really hyperbolic, you, you have heard in the talk of Glenara this morning, many other um, uh, definitions which are hyperbolically spirited, right? And in many situations, um, uh, when the group is a bit hyperbolic, you know there, is some there are some geometric notions of the boundary. Here, the one of the advantages of the Poisson boundary this can be defined for any random walk, for any group. In, in some situation, when we have a geometric boundary, I, it is closely related, and, and in fact, to, to, to some more geometrical or topological notions of the boundary. But, uh, but in general, this is not a topological space. This is not a, a metric space. This is just some space with probability measure, which I haven't defined yet. So, so we consider the space of infinite trajectories, one-sided trajectories, j infinity, and we quotient over measurable hull of this equivalence relation, and we, we, we get Poisson boundary. One well-known question which I, I would like to discuss today, first of all, given a group, given a measure on a group, we want to understand whether the boundary is trivial or not. So is the boundary trivial? Uh, uh, and then we want to also to understand, given an element in a group, we want to understand whether the group acts trivially or non-trivially on the boundary. I did not define the action yet, but mm, given g in g does Does it act trivially? Which elements can act trivially? Act. And, no, let's say non-trivially. 
And uh, these are very well known questions. Uh, we don't know, but in many, in some situation, we know what happens, and I will try to, to recall some general facts. In many situations, we don't know. Even uh, there are many examples uh, of groups and random walks where it could be tricky even to determine whether the boundary is trivial or not. And um, um, uh, I will speak about these questions. And today, I also want to speak about much more uh, new questions um, concerning the, the action of the boundary. I will speak about, on one hand, free actions. And I will speak about totally non-free actions. And this is something, a new topic for, for random action work, totally non-free. Well, when I speak about free action, maybe I give already a definition. Uh, more precisely, I will be speak about effectively free, eff what is called a bit misleading term, but it's called this way, effectively free actions. What do I mean by this? So it happens in some groups that some elements really have to act trivially. It happens even in some very well-known examples uh, as hyperbolic groups, right? So and there is no uh, notion of hyper FC center. Well, a hyperbolic group it is enough to define as just FC center, hyper FC center. And this is a, a generalization of the notion of, of a center. Um, uh, so uh, cen central elements which, which compute with everything, right? And uh, FC central elements, which are uh, elements that have finite, finitely many conjugates. And so you, take, you can take FC center. In principle, you can take, you, you can take ascending uh, sequence um, of FC central uh, extension. And what you get at the end is, uh, uh, is the hyper FC center of your group. Uh, for example, in returning, as I said, to hyperbolic groups, uh, taking limits not necessary. It's well known, right? There is this ma maximal normal finite subgroup. Mm, uh, so here, if just remark, if G is hyperbolic, Hyperbolic. This is just then. This is some finite group. In general, it could be a larger group, uh, obviously. Um, and what is known um, that if you have uh, uh, all hyper FC central elements uh, um, should act trivially on the boundary. So we have our group. We want. We have really to quotient. If you want something free, we have to quotient all over. Let's say hyper FC center of G, because this is something the group that acts completely trivially on the boundary. And you can uh, ask so if you, if, if you have some group, if you uh, quo quotient uh, over some, uh, some group that acts trivially in general, uh, if you have G uh, in G over H, H acts trivially, acts trivially on the boundary. Then, uh, uh, and if the quotient over uh, 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 over H acts freely, freely mod zero. So we always speak of the boundary as a probability space, right? So uh, th then we say that uh, the action on the boundary is effectively uh, free. It's not difficult to check that, for example, if G is hyperbolic. Whatever measure you take, the action uh, G acts effectively, effectively free on the pass on boundary. In fact, in many situations, not only in the hyperbolic one, it's quite a common situation. No, not so, so many things are known, maybe, but um, it's very natural to expect in many situations to have uh, to have effectively f free action. So, um, and uh, maybe I mentioned a very general result. So, um, first I recall. Yes, I didn't mention some general things about triviality of the boundary. So, f first of all, which group admit measures with trivial boundary? Which groups admit measures with non-trivial boundary? So. 
just some uh, first uh, theorem of, let's say, Furstenberg. Furstenberg, maybe, as in quote. And in the difficult direction to due to Kamanovich Vershek and no old theorem in the early 80s, Kamanovich Vershek and Rosenblatt, independently proven by Rosenblatt at the time. G. What is the name of the By the way, even for hyper FC centrality, I will mention some things uh, that in the last years, uh, so. Um, uh, one learned uh, importance of notions related to hyper FC centrality, in particular in some work that I will mention now. So, uh, but uh, just the fact that uh, uh, FC central uh, elements act trivially, so one of the reference also, so he didn't use this terminology. Basically, it's already in the old works of Azencourt also, but uh, uh, more explicitly uh, in the work of Jaworski. Uh, much later, and I exactly this statement we explained, for example, in our paper with, with Vadim Kamanovich. Yes, uh, I didn't say so. Um, among things that I will be so explaining to you, so first I will speak about some joint result with, with Vadim Kamanovich, and then I will speak also about other results with, um, with George Frisch, and maybe some other results as well. Uh, so, uh, so uh, this uh, old theorem says that um, G is amenable if and only if there exists a non-degenerate, non-degenerate in the sense that the support of the measure generates the group, otherwise we'll believe on a smaller group, non-degenerate measure mu. Uh, such that the boundary of Poisson boundary of GMU is trivial. So this is one of equivalent definition of amenability. I guess you, you have seen some definitions uh, mentioned in the Goldara talk, right? But um, one knows also very good that Poisson boundary also can be used to, to, to give an equivalent definition of amenability. So, um, if you can have a measure with trivial boundary, this means that a group is amenable. And if you have a non-amenable group, that is, uh, all random walks have non-trivial boundary. But I mentioned, the, this is, as I said, theorem uh, pro proven in the early 80s. And surprisingly, it took much more time for, for us to understand which measures admit measures with non-trivial boundary. So in particular, an old conjecture of kamanovich vershek was asking, does every group of exponential growth uh, has a non-trivial, uh, uh, has a measure with non-trivial boundary? It's important to say has a measure. Maybe we'll discuss some, we'll discuss some uh, um, novel known examples a bit in detail. Uh, so for simple random box, it can happen. The boundary can be trivial, can be non-trivial. There is a... Um, whole world of what, uh, what can happen. But for, for the moment, I discuss existence of measures with trivial and non-trivial boundary. And there is a remarkable result by Frisch. Um, Frisch, Hartmann, Tamuz, and Vahidi Ferdowsi, proven, um, let's say, two years ago, maybe 2019 that says that the uh, G admits, countable group G admits um, uh, mu with non-trivial boundary. boundary. If and only if uh, G is not hyper FC central, is not hyper FC central, FC central. And mm, without going in details, if you, you don't know to, to go to uh, uh, this stuff, uh, the most important for us, if you take a finitely generated group, the only hyper FC central group, uh, and they, they ex it's exactly uh, virtually important groups. So the theorem says in particular for finitely generated groups, uh, the, the, the group admits a measure with non-trivial boundary, if and only if the group is not virtually important. 
it's well known for many years. Uh, uh, so um, for, for simple random work, this is proven by Dinkin Malchanov in the 60s, then in more general case for by Azencott again and some other people. Uh, and um, so for, for we know very good for virtually important group, uh, the boundary is trivial, whatever measure you take. And uh, the theorem of this for offers say it's if and only if in all the other situation you have some measures with non-trivial boundary. And and um, so uh, the th the, this theorem uh, proves non-triviality of the boundary um, with, uh, using some co quantitative observation on, uh, on the convolution of measures. And in um, subsequent work of myself and Vadim Kamanovich, we study some class of measures closely related to, to the measures defined in this paper, a bit more general, and uh, for under certain condition, we, we describe completely the boundary. So we give, for some measures here, we give complete description of the boundary, description of the boundary, boundary. And uh, so I don't have time to speak about uh, to, to this today because I want to speak about more recent results. I wanted to mention briefly some correlates. So we really descri describe the boundary. And this boundary resembles a little bit what happens in a tree. So in some sense, what we prove with Vadim, um, a bit surprisingly for myself, that uh, the convergence to the boundary for, for, for these particular measures resemble very much what happens not only in hyperbolic group, but really in a tree in some sense. But this is some infinite, uh, in some sense, some tree with infinite uh, uh, valency, and uh, I don't want to really describe it. Now I just wanted to mention some corollaries of this description, uh, just some, some um, corollary description. So we um, uh, we prove in particular, so one of the pro properties uh, we prove here, so for any measure that exists this measure with non-trivial boundary where uh, the action is effectively free. So one of the things we prove, so for, for each G like this, it's not, not for each G which is not hyper FC central, what we prove with Adim, in particular there exists measure, uh, the action, the action on the boundary, boundary is effectively Free. That is big quotient over hyper center and we prove the action is free. Now I want to um, to mention some other results. So so uh, so when it's free, first of all, as I said, for any group there exists some measure where the action is effectively free. And then for some groups, for a free group, for example, for any hyperbolic group, whatever measure you choose. Uh, without any assumption on the measure, uh, the action is effectively free. I would like to mention that some question about Poisson boundary remains difficult, surprisingly, even for free groups and hyperbolic groups. There is a well-known question, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> still quite open, even in the case of a free group or even in the case of a free uh, semi-group. Whether the convo so uh, so what happens in hyperbolic gr group? What is well known? You have your trajectories, and they converge to the points. Uh, to, to of geometric boundary. So they lie not so far from geodesics and they converge to points of geometric boundary. And this is well known, this happens for, for any measure. But a well, well known open question um, that the, 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 the we take the exit measure, does it provide a complete description of the boundary? So in some situation, under some moment condition, it's known. So for again, for free group, very old result, e even not using this language, but uh, description of the Poisson boundary is due to the Dinkin Malchanov, then for hyper group due to Ankana, uh, and then for more general class of groups due to Kemanovich, and, uh, and not again, not only in hyperbolic, in many hyperbolic-like contexts, you can have a, f uh, a complete description of the boundary in terms of the exit measure to, 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 to the geometric boundary. But it's an open question even for a free group, whether the convergence to the boundary, so in the case of a free group, it's just your tree, right? You, you converge just to the boundary of your, of your regular tree. Uh, does, it, does it provide a complete description of the boundary? Not, uh, this is not known, but... Well, what do you mean by the complete description? Uh, that it has full support or something else? Just, uh, uh, complete description that uh, you 
first of all, what does it mean that the boundary is trivial? Maybe I didn't say it, it explicitly. Uh, everything is, uh, is uh, mod zero, right? So uh, no, no, uh, boundary is non-trivial, meaning that there exists some set of probability, uh, of probability strictly between zero and one, uh, which, um, uh, well, maybe it gives uh, some definition. There is the definition of a mu boundary which is basically a quotient of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, um, of the Poisson boundary, if uh, there is some event that are well uh, defined on this uh, exit boundary, as, uh, on these equivalence classes, the, uh, the, 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 this is a mu boundary. So when you have convergence to something, as it happens in the geometric, in geometric uh, situation, thi this means that um, you have a mu boundary, so you have a quotient of your boundary. And uh, as a space with measure, uh, equal means really as a probability space, it's equal to, to so the, this natural mapping is, is an isomorphism as a uh, spaces of measures. There are many ways to define it. For example, if you, if you prefer using uh, rather hypo uh, harmonic functions, so the harmonic function, the reason Poisson boundary is called Poisson boundary, there is sometimes called Poisson Furstenberg boundary due to his great results uh, about the boundary. Uh, so, but Poisson, because of the Poisson formula for harmonic functions in the circle, right? So you, 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 you integrate uh, your boundary condition to get harmonic functions. So similar here for, for random box, so you, uh, a harmonic function you get from, from the exit boundary, you put a probability measure and you integrate, you get a harmonic function. Complete description here, for example, means all harmonic function you can, uh, you can obtain integrating, uh, integrating over this exit measure on the geometric boundary. Yes, but these were some side remarks. Um, I, I simply wanted to mention that though we don't know completely what happens with the boundary for, for general measures, on hyper, even in the case, what can be shown that um, whatever measure you take, you have something effectively um, effectively free. There are some situations also clo um, that are that could be far away from hyperbolic. There are many reasons why the action could be effectively free. For example, it can be shown that if the group has, let's say, CMS property, CMS property, if it has countably many subgroups. And it's obvious. One can show that if the group has CMS property, the action is effectively free, w whatever measure you take, really. And for example, maybe some monsters were mentioned, I, I believe, in the previous talk. If you take, uh, for example, some of Alshansky monster with, uh, you, you can have uh, with only finite uh, uh, subgroups, uh, right? Uh, some of these monsters has only countably many uh, subgroups. Or you can take a polycyclic group, for example, which have countably many subgroups. The, there are various examples of groups. And there is reasons for, for the action to be effectively free. And in fact, um, until recently, uh, so, uh, um, uh, uh, the, so the one didn't know any non-free actions, uh, and uh, my result with Vadim, there exists group G, and I mentioned some examples we study. As G, you can take, for example, infinite, maybe I mentioned already, symmetric group over a countable set. Or the exit G, which could be chosen like this, or maybe I mentioned already alternatively, alternatively, it can take some, can take G can be locally finite nilpotent, for example. But there exists some G such that the action or, or the action, the action on the boundary is not free, uh, it's not only not effectively free, but maybe, I don't describe it, it's something which is called totally no, non-free. Uh, I want also to, 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 to ex explain you quickly some other re results about solvable groups, so maybe I don't uh, uh, describe you in detail uh, the definition, but totally non-free is a strong negation of be being free in particular, it implies, but, the, but it's even stronger than that. If, if you take two points, almost surely they have 
uh, they have different stabilizers. So here, effectively free, you just have this subgroup, which is so, uh, trivially, all your stabilizers are just this subgroup. And here, on the contrary, you really distinguish the points of the boundary. And uh, that's what we prove for some groups, including infinite symmetric groups uh, with Vadim. And um, I'm tempted to ask the question, so I have to admit that this we cannot do so far. Does there exist a simple random walk on a finitely generated group with this property? Uh, does there exist a simple random walk? Simple random walk. Okay, with this property. And so far, we don't know even uh, if there exist groups with fin of finite entropy. So I did, did not did, uh, discuss entropy in detail. But um, so for the moment, our, our examples are quite dispersed measures. And it seems interesting to understand. But I don't see the reason why, uh, why it cannot happen for finitely generated group on one, uh, on one hand. On the other hand, as I said, there are many obstacles. So for, for many classes of groups, we, we know it cannot happen. right? So, but now I want to explain you something else. Um, yeah. What should I leave? Maybe I need to get this. Yes, maybe uh, b b uh, before moving to another topic, uh, I wanted to mention briefly that this notion of totally non-freeness uh, was introduced by, by Wierschek uh, around uh, 2010 in his work um, on invariant measures on the symmetric infinite symmetric group. And uh, quickly after that, around the same time, um, uh, uh, the same notion, but uh, uh, using another language which is became popular now, uh, the language of invariant random uh, subgroups uh, was introduced in the work of Abert, uh, Virak, Glasner, and Bowen, right? So, uh, uh, so, so this statement is a part of, of, uh, of trying to understand what measures live on the subgroup of the group, right? So here in the story of, um, of this uh, tonally non-freeness, so we have the points of our boundary. We can consider the map from the points to, 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 to the stabilizers. So, so each point will look uh, what elements stabilize these points. And that's what we were studied, not for random box, but just for, 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 for abstract actions of a symmetric group. And so we have the image of the measure, right? So we have a measure on the boundary. We have the, the in the case of the boundary, we have an image on the subgroups. And so the, this, this is among this question. We want to understand the measures uh, living on, on the subgroup. But in case of the Poisson boundary, we, these measures are not invariant. They are quasi-invariant, right? So you never will have a really invariant measure. And this is a much more general notion, and so and which seems interesting to understand for, for general groups. But I want to move back to uh, more old and qu usual questions about the Poisson boundary. Um, as I said, here, if uh, for uh, this a bit exotic so far, but maybe not exotic at all, um, property of total non-freeness, with Vadim, so recently we, uh, we construct uh, even some locally nilpotent um, examples, right? And if we say not no locally nilpotent, but nilpotent, as I said, this is a very old result. If you have an important group, virtually nilpotent group, the Poisson boundary is always trivial. Uh, for nilpotent, it's like this. But if you take a soluble group, uh, the, the question is very much open. We don't understand good what happens with, with, with the Poisson boundary, even when it's trivial and uh, when it's not. So I remind uh, very old examples of Kamanovich and Vershek. Probably everybody knows Reef product, right? You have a Reef product, lamplighter group. And if you take D1 or 2, if you consider simple random walk, the growth of the group, of course, is exponential, uh, but the boundary is trivial. Boundary trivial. And if D is equal to 
um, greater than three or any group of, of, of not, uh, not quadratic group, then the boundary is non trivial, but the group is amenable. So, as I said, uh, attention in this theorem of Rosen, Latka, and Balanch and Vershek, uh, the existence of the measure is important, uh, not enough to consider just simple random walks, right? Non trivial. And so, uh, uh, the reason why the boundary is untrivial, probably everybody knows, right? We walk in that free, for example, which uh, the random walk is transient. And so we look what happens with the lamp. For the simple random walk, we can change the situation with the lamp only when we visit a point. So meaning we see since the random walk is transient, uh, uh, the, the lamps converge, right? So for each point of the space, uh, at the limit, there is a well-defined uh, notion that this lamp is on and off. There is this limiting operation of the lamps, but it, it was an equation were open for, for quite a while, whether it's a complete description of the boundary for D starting with uh, uh, five, it's my result. And uh, general case for simple random walks, it's uh, D greater or equal to three, it's result of lines and pairs, lines and pairs, two, three, no, I don't know, four years ago. Um, uh, uh, it's com lamps, complete description of the boundary. For simple random walk, for general random walk, there are there are still open questions, really, to characterize as uh, when it happens. Lamps, uh, complete description, description of the boundary. And yes, maybe I mentioned yes. Uh, still speaking about effectively free actions, uh, another result with Vadim. If you have a Reef product uh, um, with something. Uh, and uh, we have uh, some mild condition on the measure, which is true, for example, for any simple random walk for, for, for a group uh, with non-trivial boundary. We, we assume that there is convergence, m the measure mu, such that there exists conver convergence of the lamps, of the lamps. For example, for any simple random walk on uh, Z3 with Z to Z, uh, with Vadim, we prove the action is free, the action on the boundary is free. It's free. Again, here, we, uh, under this uh, so such uh, uh, um, general assumption, we don't know complete description of the boundary. And in some cases, it's really not diff even diff could be more complicated than the lamps. But uh, at least we can analyze the action on the configuration to conclude that the action is free. And it's a natural question to ask uh, whether it's always effectively free. Well, if I said, since I did not say whether it's trivial or not, let's say effectively free is effectively free. So it could be trivial, for example. But anyway, it's effectively free. And as I said, but on some other examples, as I mentioned here, our main result the, uh, on symmetric groups and on some locally important groups, uh, it, could be, it could be totally non-free. But now I wa want you to mention something about explain uh, our work with jo Josh Frisch about solvable groups. So for some solvable examples like this, uh, you know, for quite a while, uh, what happens? But there are many solvable groups uh, for which we do not know uh, what happens, and we don't know. So just I want to re re maybe some. Um, uh, some remark about reef products. So one way to see reef products, uh, one can write like this. We have the D. Let's take D variables. You can take independent variables, or you can uh, take uh, algebraic independent uh, complex numbers, or whatever you prefer. And you consider uh, such uh, matrices. Uh, so you consider maybe rather like this, and the matrix with one. Consider two times two matrices. Um, uh, so uh, this one corresponds to the lamp, and this one generates a billion group Z D. This is just one way to to explain what is a, what is a Reef product, right? And uh, so far, so and Poisson boundaries for linear groups uh, were studied in many cases, but. It was not known in an open, it's still uh, not known even for solvable groups among linear groups, whether the boundary, when it's trivial and not. So just remarks, so obvious remarks from, from uh, take a, a linear group, right, over some field. By this alternative, we know either this group contains a free subgroup, so in particular, it's non-abinable, right? 
either G non-amenable or, or, or um, G is virtually virtually uh, uh, virtually solvable. Well, to be more accurate, at least infinitely generated uh, case, it's uh, virtually solvable, solvable, but otherwise uh, it's also more or less virtually solvable, right? And uh, on one hand, we know this. So in non ambivalent case, as I mentioned, we know in any group the boundary is non-trivial, right? If you're only interested in, in the triviality, of the boundary, uh, we know what happens. Uh, the boundary is not trivial. But what happens if the, the uh, if the group is amenable? Then, if the group is solvable by Milner and Wolf, you know very good, right? Uh, what happens with the growth of the solvable group, right? So either the growth is exponential, uh, and in this case there exists actually a, a free sub semi group. Uh, either growth, let's say, either growth, either growth is polynomial. Or G contains a free semigroup. Right? So we see by, by, by these classical results of Milner Wolf that this, right? Uh, there is a very simple reason for, for, for a linear group to have exponential growth. Either it really has a free semigroup, and obviously any group, not only linear, right, uh, containing a free semigroup has exponential growth, or well, uh, all the growth is, uh, is polynomial, right? And one can ask, can we find some reason for triviality of the boundary? And so far, nothing uh, was known in this direction. And I want to explain um, uh, my recent result with uh, Josh Frisch. Um, which says the following. Yeah, I, this is also convenient to me. Oh, oh yes. So we have some linear group, so we have some n times n matrices. And um, I will mention at the end some more general equation that makes sense even for non-amenable cases. But uh, it's even we have even much more open questions. But for the moment, we discuss just triviality and triviality. Um, uh, as I said, uh, we know by this alternative the group is virtually uh, uh, virtually solvable, and by Maltz's uh, theorem, it's virtually there is a finite index subgroup, so the, the the group is upper triangle, right? So have some zero, zero, zero. Something over there. Then. And um, so our strategy is like this. So uh, first of all, whatever the characteristic of, of the group of the field we have, we prove a theorem reducing uh, reducing any linear group like this to to a particular meta particular metabolian two times two group of, of, a, of a special form. So. Um, one of our main results is like this. So, this is Josh. So, we have some measure mu on this group, let's say, of finite entropy. Finite entropy. I guess many of you know what is the entropy. If you don't know, take a simple random box. The, 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 this statement, is first of all, is important, even if you consider simple random box. And we say that the boundary of G mu is non-trivial if and only if there exists some i and j such as the following hold. So we take some i, some position i and j, so we have here i and j, and we consider something, uh, we consider something we call uh, uh, i j block of, of this matrix is the following thing. So we, are in the, we considered only four positions over here. If we have any uh, zeros, we consider uh, 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 these uh, uh, two elements on the diagonal and the element here corresponding to these uh, coordinates, i and j. And on we consider the following two, two, two times two matrices. So to this uh, group, uh, linear group, we associate the following, the following group. So we consider two times two matrices. And on diagonal, we just put wh what elements we have here on diagonal. If we have here something, j i i 
here you have JJJ. We just consider diagonal two times two matches like this. And now we look what happens, what we like to put in this position. Then we look in this position. And we have to consider the following order on the positions. So we say when we have these positions, we, we consider a partial order. We, we say, I always confuse what I like to choose, bigger or larger. So we consider the order like on the picture. So when we move here, it becomes smaller. If we move here in the vertical position, it becomes smaller. Right? And uh, what we need to consider, as we say, uh, 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 there is a valid lock in this position ij if the following holds. If for this ij, there is some element in our group which has zero in all elements in all upper um, elements over diagonal which are bigger than this position I, I, I j and some non-zero element here. So, so we need here how to so we need something here, some something non-zero here. Then we want zero, zero, zero here. Well, here on diagonal something. We don't care here. We don't care, right? If there is some element in the group, we say there is a, uh, there is a valid gr uh, group for these indexes i and j. And if the group is valid for these two associated two times two matrices, we consider just matrix with one. One, one, zero, one. Not, no, not so important what ele non-zero element we can have here. And it may happen we can have several elements here. here. It, re it really influences the structure of our group. Uh, so th so this, uh, this uh, procedure may, may make sense even if we started with two, two, two times two matrices. There are interesting uh, two times two uh, groups uh, for which one did not know whether the boundary is uh, trivial or not. So here, something that make this reduction we make even if the matrix was already two times two ma matrices because we, we choose only one single element and we put one in this so position. Wh what is the statement? Of yes, so I didn't fini matrix. finish the statement. So uh, we say our boundary on our linear group is non-trivial if and only if the boundary is non-trivial if on I and if there exists ij and a valid block mm, in position ij such that the boundary the boundary of, let's say, associated, I will explain what it means, associated uh, measure on this block, let's call this block Bij, on this group Bij is non-trivial. What do I mean when I say we take an appropriate measure on this block? What only matters us is the projection on our abelian group, right? Our group has an important subgroup and abelian quotient correspond to, to the diagonal. So and here, well, there is this abelian uh, quotient. So what is important when we, we reduce our group to these blocks, we need to consider the measures that have the same projection on this abelian group. And we can state there are sev several equivalent definitions. We can say there exist. Uh, here we can, uh, so actually, uh, the non-triviality on the block wouldn't depend on our choice of associated measure. So we can formulate a theorem. The boundary is non-trivial even only if there exists uh, some ij and a measure, uh, appropriate measure on this block such that the boundary is non-trivial. Or we can work a closely related formulation. We say if there exists i and j and for all the associated measures, the boundary would be non-trivial. So this is our um, uh, so first main step that works over any field. So make a reduction. I, I have a few minutes, right? So I do I have five minutes or something? Well, uh, you can take more if you need. So, uh, uh, but so, um, so thi this is the general statement that works for, for any field. Now, there are two cases. The characteristic could be positive or it could be zero. Now, maybe I will try to, in the remaining minutes, explain briefly that in positive characteristic case, we, we give a complete description containing many new examples, both with trivial and non-trivial boundaries. So, um, So maybe I explain characteristic zero. Characteristic zero. Let's take P first. 
not have a characteristic P. Just for example, uh, this classical lamp light uh, over two, two lamps, it is a particular case of uh, characteristic is two, right? So even characteristic P, uh, P we have uh, many interesting examples, and some are really more complicated and uh, just, just leave product. But um, um, what we prove in characteristic P, what we do next, right, we make this reduction. Our goal then to understand triviality of the boundary of the whole group is always to understand the triviality of the corresponding two times two groups. So if you want to make a classification, we, not, uh, we, we need to characterization for two times two upper diagonal uh, uh, groups to understand whether the boundary is trivial or not. And so, so uh, uh, maybe I don't have time to, to explain the, the criterion, but I mentioned some corollaries uh, from our complete description. Maybe one is also equivalent description, actually. So in characteristic P, what we prove finally that for our group G, so, so the boundary the boundary is non-trivial, is not trivial, if and only if there exists a block Ig, so we have these two times two matches, and in this block we have just three-dimensional Reef product inside, so as a subgroup, let's say. So, a priori, we just with some analogy with, with what we know to growth. As I said, uh, when we discuss the growth, one one direction was obvious, right? When we have a semigroup, for example, or free semigroup, obviously the growth is exponential. Here, in the situation of Poisson boundary, it's a well-known open question. We don't know, first of all, whether the reality of the boundary depends on odd, on the simple random walk on a group. Unfortunately, for many many situations, we know it's the case. But it's still an open co question whether we can have a count example. And there is also a related open, uh, old open question. We have some subgroup with non-trivial boundary. For example, this one. A priori, even in this direction, it's not clear. Even if you have a group which contains this as a subgroup, should the boundary be non-trivial? Maybe yes, but we don't know in general, right? But here, what happens for, for, for the linear group? After all, so we have this classification. So after all, everything is, is reduced to check whether in the block we have some standard object like this, and then the boundary is non-trivial. Otherwise, I it is trivial. And um, some fi um, further remarks. In, partic in particular, this shows that for these groups, for example, for this linear group of a characteristic P, triviality of, of the boundary for simple random walk doesn't depend on the choice of the simple random walk. The of this characterization. This also, f uh, one can also using as a primary inequalities for, uh, in some for, 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 for some new as primary inequalities, but related uh, to um, to Fellner functions of these groups. Moreover, one can uh, one can show that if among these groups, under this assumption, if we have two quasi-isometric groups, uh, if for one group the boundary is uh, a simple round walk is non-trivial. For the other, it also will be non-trivial. Again, in general, it's an open question. For graphs, there, is a, there are these old uh, uh, count examples. Uh, so if you have two quasi axiomatic graphs, uh, it was first uh, 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 Terry Lyons uh, many years ago who has shown you can have quasi axiomatic graphs with trivial boundary one, the other is non-trivial. Further examples were constructed later by uh, Benjamin, uh, who constructed even some polynomial growing examples. But for the groups, it's an open question. So, um, but at least in this class of groups, uh, everything uh, is stable. Now, so it's just maybe a remark, uh, so some, some caution. So, so in the block, so we reduce the question if and only if in the block there is some standard object. Just attention, this subgroup in the block is not a subgroup, in not even a section of our group, right? So it's important we say there exists this block, but we associate this block and we check, do we have this three-dimensional reproduct or not? And, um, and uh, this is what happens in characteristic P. Now in characteristic zero, I don't have time to explain, we have some partial, uh, partial results in characteristic zero, and we have some conjecture in characteristic zero, and which, which shows in characteristic situation would be very different. So here, in some sense, everything, so the only blocks, when we reduce to blocks, we look really on, on these reef products, and more or less uh, uh, we, we get this well-known picture with reef products, we know which are trivial or not. Uh, so uh, one can speak about the rank, I don't uh, define in detail, but just in intuitively, a rank for reef product, for example, if you have ZD, uh, the rank is D. And here, if rank is at least three, 
the boundary is non-trivial. If rank is 1 or 2, uh, the boundary is trivial. What, what happens in characteristic 0, though, we do prove, even in characteristic 0, we give a sufficient criterion if rank is free, with new uh, examples, if rank is free, uh, then the boundary is non-trivial. If rank is 1, the boundary is uh, trivial. But in rank 2 is more subtle in characteristic 0 case, because in rank 2, the boundary can be both trivial and non-trivial. And uh, just as I formulate vaguely our conjecture that uh, the boundary would be um, would be trivial only if, when we look at the block of rank two, it will be really two-dimensional uh, Reef product. So here, here in Christie's period, all rank two case after all are the same for the behavior of the boundary. But in Christie's zero two-dimensional Reef product, we know of course them that uh, that two with z uh, um, have trivial boundary. And if we look to the blocks, we conjecture there is nothing else that can happen. So I guess I have to stop here. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions? Yes, Tava. Yes. So it's, it's known that solvable groups which are not actually important, they are actually subject to some data driven groups. So uh, like this. Like Maybe if you like have like uh, groups. Yeah. Sorry, maybe just you could repeat the question because I'm not sure that people online will. Uh -huh. But if, if Anna, you can repeat the question, that would be fine. So? I, I didn't understand the question yet. But okay. The question is can, if, if you have this measure which is not trivial, or whatever, can you make it subject to uh, metal bigger groups which also has a non trivial uh, boundary? Uh, um, I tried to repeat the question, I'm not sure if I understood correctly. Uh, so maybe first an obvious uh, re remark, which I forgot to mention. W if you have a group and you have a quotient, probably Tamar has uh, this in mind, right? So if you have a quotient of the group with non-trivial boundary, the boundary of the group is non-trivial. So if you map to something with non-trivial uh, boundary, then um, then um, uh, then the boundary is non uh, is non-trivial. But here, uh, I hope I don't uh, say something stupid. But here. As I said, so you don't, uh, uh, I will speak, that's why I mentioned section. So you don't necessarily have it as a section. So you don't necessarily map it to, uh, I mentioned leaf product, but if I say it correctly, you don't necessarily c can map your group. Well, solvable. I know, I know solvable. I know here may, it's a good question. So. You, you certainly cannot map to a leaf product in general, even in the billion case. In these blocks, you can have a block of uh, of, uh, of rank free, not mapping uh, to, to to the corresponding Reef product. But your question: Can you map to a metabolian group with non trivial Every solvable group admits, which is not virtually important, admits a subgroup of finite index which maps onto a metabolian group. Yes, but we want to uh, preserve the boundary triviality, right? Yes, you, you need to have a complicated. So my question is: Can I if you assume that your solvable group has a non-trivial boundary, can can you make your metabolian group also have a non-trivial boundary? It's a good question, right? So uh, these blocks are not quotients, right? So, but it's good to check indeed um, uh, w w whether you can map to, to a metabolian one. As I said, what I know, you ca certainly cannot map to a reef product. But it's. A I'm not sure you can. Uh, yes, this is a question. I should. should uh, with Josh, we should know the answer, but we did not check it actually. Uh, so this is a very natural question we were thinking about, but um, I'm not completely sure about the answer in this situation. Can can you uh, f find a quotient uh, to, 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 to the mid? For Ah, you asked not only for linear. This is a very interesting question, but uh, we don't understand at all, right? Uh, triviality of the boundary in many in many um, solvable groups. So it it could be a conjecture, but uh, I don't have a counter example, I guess, even in general solvable context. Your question: If you have a solvable group, oh, maybe I do have. I have to think a little bit. So you ask: You have a solvable group with non-trivial boundary, let's say, for a simple random walk. Uh, can you map to a metabolian group? So such that the qu quotient also have non-trivial boundary. Uh, up to index, well, up to finite index, uh, never mind. I, I have to think. I have to think. I think. I think maybe the answer is no, but I have to think before be, 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 before saying something. 
but thanks a lot. This is a very relevant question. Indeed. Maybe I made some comment related. I forgot. I wanted to to, <laughs> to to make this comment at this conference, but forgot during the talk. So this some comment about this um, uh, theme of, of for offers. So they provide a measure with non-trivial boundary. But another question: whether this boundary can have a nice decay. And this is an open question. I just wanted to mention very briefly the story I didn't discuss here, but my very old, uh, more than 15 years uh, result ago, which constructed some, some, some measures with non-trivial boundary on some Grigorchuk groups. I just wanted to, to mention in that old work that I thank uh, Thomas uh, in my paper because he, some Liam I explained in this uh, uh, theorem about decay of the measure that can be uh, chosen with non-trivial boundary. I thank Thomas that discussion with him improved, improved Improved the, um, the condition in this lemma, and but uh, some w w w much more recent results. So my results with Tiani, right? For all Grigorich group, after all, we know a measure with some finite moment, alpha moment. Um, certainly, it couldn't be first moment because the growth is sub-exponential. But the question we asked recently with Tiani on any group, it makes sense to ask: d Does there exist a measure not only with non-trivial boundaries in, in this general theorem, but can we have a nice measure, nice measure with some alpha? Alpha moment, which is a strengthening of well-known gap conjecture for growth, right? But I don't have the time to, to, to explain more. Mm. Other questions? Alex on the side, is there any question online? I don't see any question online. If there are people online who want to ask a question now, feel free to unmute yourselves. Well, if there is no more question, I think we can thank Anna again. <laughs>